has it that there was an ancient trinket with the exceptional ability to harness the inner thoughts of a person within the chasm. A trinket that can use those thoughts and construct an endless labyrinth made up entirely of one's imagination. This trinket was once given to mortals by a person of great importance and was used to defeat an army of darkness. Only through the combined power of both human and adeptus was this trinket used to seal both itself and the monsters that it trapped within. There was once an ancient set of lines from a clan passed down through multiple generations that must be spoken to control such a powerful object. Stars align, bestow your light, evil purged by thunder's might. Spirit curbed, Numa surge, by dictum divine, heed these words. Do as I command! <laughs> These were the words spoken by Yelan, an agent of the Ministry of Civil Affairs, and her clan ancestry are the only ones privy to its origins. It was used to activate the enigmatic catalyst known as the Fantastic Compass. This is, as far as we know, the only way to actuate or control this catalyst. But the extent of such a powerful trinket can only be limited by one's own mind and imagination. And the terrifying concepts of which this compass holds is both amplified and used against anyone trapped within it. Both the user, its friends, and its enemies are one and the same within the chaotic space that they now tread within. Any type of individual, both good and bad, are simply classified as prey. This fantastic, or a better name would be Unfathomable Compass, is quite possibly the most terrifying and nearly inhumane weapon made by the most twisted and warped minds in existence. Not only using the memories, fears, and psyche of any person against them, but warping everyone else's perception of reality and coaxing one another to keep chasing and searching for their own imagination and desire. All done in a chaotic and maze-like endless space to keep its victims from escaping. And what's worse is the use of its fallen victims, whose friends and allies made into phantasms as a way to lure, catch, apprehend, and if given the chance, even attack those weak enough to escape its grasp. If you've already noticed from the thumbnail and intro, this video is about the Fantastic Compass, its mind-blowing abilities, how powerful this trinket is, and its near limitless potential as well as its twisted and cunning way to trap its victims. No timestamps this time because I need you to slowly absorb this form of insanity with me. So without further ado, let's dive into the Fantastic Compass. Not many people would think that mere illusions and apparitions can even have the ability to hurt anyone. Even the weakest soldiers can tell reality from a formless ghost. Someone who's versed in the art of magic and studied for their whole life or even a great martial artist whose combat prowess is unmatched, or even a simple vision holder would prefer something with more impact than a mere illusion. But I ask you this, what if you saw your own battle brothers or fellow apprentices raise their swords against you? Or what if you hear the voices of your loved ones calling out in the distance? Or suddenly see your own family members in a place that you know they shouldn't be in? What then would be your reaction to your ally pointing their weapons at you? What would you do when you hear those loved ones calling your name? What would you do then? Even the strongest individual in both strength and willpower would be surprised or caught off guard at such happenstances. But what if these familiar voices, these apparitions and silhouettes, these mere illusions that you said were nothing but harmless figments of your imagination, kept eating away at your psyche and slowly ripped your mental state and your morale to its lowest. Once all seemed at its darkest, you see your worst fears happening all at once, and your soul is then left to be consumed by the echoes of those who kept calling out to you. In the deepest crevice of the chasm, a thaumaturge and an unknown yaksha were all that's left after a bloody war against the darkness. You know, today I saw my family down here, clear as day. What do you think? Am I losing my mind now too? Look, there's someone over there. Who are they? They're... They're my... My... Brother! Brother Bosatius. <laughs> hey, Bosatius. Bosatius. I... 
I am Bosatius, and my destiny is to make the ultimate sacrifice. These were the last words of the lone Yaksha, Marshal Vritras, before he fell within the Fantastic Compass's winding tunnels. And not long after, the thaumaturge Boyang met his end in the Fantastic Compass as well. Similarly, seven individuals accidentally broke a seal on the ground and were nearly victims of the same fate. Two from Inazuma, an Oni and his deputy. Three from Liwe, a mysterious agent looking for her clan's lost catalyst. A half-adeptus, half-human legal advisor searching for someone's will. And a Yaksha in search for his friend. Finally, two whose origins are unknown. One called a traveler and a floating and rather talkative companion. They too have seen figures and shadows within the tunnel, but for now there were nothing but harmless silhouettes in the corners and crevices. Later on, they find a room that changes depending on who enters it. Some tried and some didn't, but all who tried suffered the same fate, seeing their fears and nightmares. The Oni saw beans. Beans, what the fuck? The deputy saw her mother forcing her ideals and aspirations onto her. The advisor saw a legal dispute. And finally, the traveler felt their recurring nightmare become reality, followed by a quick fall into an endless void. To the unseeing eye, this may seem like a fun way to trick or prank someone. But if done with more intent, it can very well lead the person who entered the room into their own demise. If you don't believe that the compass is more terrifying than it is fantastic, take a listen to these words from Yelan and Yanfei. At first glance, that door may seem like a prank. It shows you whatever you're afraid of, but if it manages to lure you inside, there's no way of knowing what might be in there. One minute, it's playing a joke to get you to lower your guard. The next, the danger is real, and it's trapped you. This space is a powerful opponent. It wants to use our minds against us. My clan has practiced magic for generations, and has created some catalysts that only we know how to use. I recognized something like one of those catalysts in the domain. Unfortunately, it disappeared as soon as I approached it. I think so, but it's hard to distinguish between reality and illusion here. I can't be sure. Also, I am the only one out of all of us who could know what it would look like. To me, that confirms that this place really is reading our minds. Just like with that door. It's like it's alive and testing us. By reading our minds and showing us what we want, it creates the reality that we want to be true. Everything it does is either to get us to lower our guard or to wear us down. If that's the case, it can only have one goal, to trap us here until we die. What else could it be? So the compass can bend the truth and lace such truths with its own lies and deceit. One key example is their Yaksha friend Xiao, who left to search for his friend alone, and the compass saw it as a way to use him as an enticing bait for the remaining three in the tunnels to separate in some way. This place, this domain, or this chaotic space only specific to the compass is capable of reading a person's psyche and turning it against them, using other people's real situations as information and making a seemingly believable scenario to lure others and trap them. How can such an inanimate object possess such great intuition and cunning, enough to fabricate real scenarios and turn it into real traps? These are things that only sentient and intelligent beings can do. You wouldn't think a mere compass can trick you into believing that you can save your friend, even though you know that they are actually in danger, would you? If that were to happen, can you find a way to save them? Or will you fall to the compasses all too real tricks and be devoured? The vigilant Yaksha Shao said this talking about the fantastic compass and how it intends to devour the souls of its victims. It was no accident that you saw my illusion that day. This place used your desire to find me to create a trap that you would willingly walk into. Pure deception is easy to spot, but the truth laced with lies can be a fatal combination. What you heard were really things that I said. It made sure you heard my real voice to create panic. This one-way communication was the bait. If we hadn't managed to get in touch through the spatial rift, we may well have lost someone by now. 
Something you might notice is that I said that it wants the souls of its victims. Because what's more terrifying is that this compass isn't here to outright dispose of you and be done either. The fantastic compass is after your soul. Remember the shadows and the figures you see every now and again? Well, be careful. Because if the compass sees that you're weak enough, or if it thinks that you're too much of a problem, those illusions can become real and won't just be there for spooks and pranks. These are the final words of Xiao as a means of precaution before continuing into the fantastic compass. Rather than murdering in cold blood, this space seems more intent on consuming souls. I rejoin to warn you that it's extremely dangerous here. If you stay here too long, this space may well devour you. But how do you know? You might become a shadow of your former self, wandering the underground like a lost soul. I've not mentioned the sense of time within the domain because even the compass can take hold of that variable too. We're seeing things in people that shouldn't be here, even ghosts. And we don't feel hungry because the state of our bodies is suspended. It's as if time itself has stopped for us. If that's true, it means we've entered into a place where normal logic doesn't apply. When you put it all together, everything points towards one possibility. This is a place where time and space are thrown into chaos. When you first entered, you thought that you were hungry, but you weren't. You thought you were tired, but apparently you still had energy. More days pass and you fall deeper into one of its traps. The moment the compass notices your irritation and stress slowly build up, it is then that that time will actually start to impact your body. Your fatigue from before starts doubling down and the days where you thought you stayed in the compass start feeling like it was longer. The hunger you thought you didn't feel, you now notice has increased tenfold and it's also severely impacted your mental fortitude. You start to become more rash with your decisions without a second guessing yourself and start to make the wrong choices. The compass knows that you're weak and lowering your guard. You need to rest. You have to rest. And before you know it, you're being attacked by the ghosts and illusions that you thought were harmless. By then, where shadows can attack you and being trapped by the compass itself, this is as far as a normal being can go. Anyone with a better understanding of the compass or possess a vast amount of both knowledge and strength are the only ones that can go through with escaping the compass's remaining tricks. Because now, the shadows and illusions have become all too real to be harmless. Simple figures of treasure hoarders or Fatui agents spewing hateful words now try to slash, shoot, and even use elemental magic on you just so you can be dealt with swiftly. Because now you have not only become a problem for the compass, you are now a threat to it. It now does everything in its power to try and stop you. Abyss heralds, illiteral waves, ruin constructs, Fatui platoons, and all the enemies that you faced before, now you must fight again. And if your sanity hasn't waned enough just yet, it will also use the very friends and allies that you have to attack you using the real words that they themselves shouted in battle. You'll be faced with countless waves of both mental and physical trials, along with multiple instances and repetitions of the same arena. This is the last wave, why hasn't it stopped? And so you keep moving forward and keep fighting. And just when you think that your luck runs out, you might have just stood long enough for the compass to cease its endless droves of memories and imagination. Up until now, you've finally found the compass itself. And by then, you'll be lucky to have been stuck in the compass with an adeptus, let alone still be alive with them. Because the only way to escape the compass and its imaginary space is to use nearly every ounce of power both you and the adeptus have, but you'll also need that power to fend off the multitude and countless souls and terrors that have already been built up and used to take your soul that was trapped within the fantastic compass. And what's worse is that even after you've escaped, even after you've finally left the horrors of the compass, you're left with nothing to go home with. The compass itself dissolves and fades into nothing, seemingly returning to its domain or crumbling to dust. But you know yourself that the only things you were able to bring home were the shattered memories of the past and slightly more than half of a tenpole. So let me leave you with some words of wisdom from one traveler to another. If you hear tales of a trinket passed down from an ancestral clan or an item of great importance used by a human and an adeptus, 
or even a small mention of the events in the chasm 500 years ago, then I urge you to stay away. For the trinket they speak of might be the terrifying and ever so unfathomable fantastic compass. There you have it guys, the fantastic compass, its history, and its horrifying potential. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching. As always, like the video, comment what you think, and subscribe if you want more of my content. I think someone's calling you and said that you should watch my next video. Was it me? Oh, of course not. Maybe you're just hearing things and seeing illusions.